Welcome to Helping Cells Radio, the enterprise software podcast you need in your life. I am your host, Bill Kishard. I want to thank you for joining us today. If you're a long-time listener, thank you for listening. It means so much to me that you spend this kind of time with us, and make no mistake, I do this for you, our long-time listeners. And if you're new, thanks for checking us out. Here's what you need to know. We are not your average technology podcast. We focus on authentic conversations with technology professionals who live and work all over the customer journey, from marketing to customer success, and we try to unpack innovative ways that people are taking a helpful approach with customers. We hardly ever edit the show. (laughs) We like to imagine that you are out there listening in on a conversation between a couple of friends because that's what we think you want to be a part of, not some boring interview show with canned questions and scripted responses. That is not how we roll on Helping Cell Radio. <laughs> so with that said, on with the show. Welcome to Strike Deck Radio, a podcast focused on customer success and the leaders who are implementing best practices in our field. This podcast is brought to you by Strike Deck, a medallia company, and the Success League. My name is Kristen Hare, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Success League. And my guest tonight is Bill Cashard. Oh my gosh, I'm a guest. <laughs> script our um, our podcast and edit them. We have very different <laughs> So I I'm just basically put that right out there. I just consulted you right on the <laughs> right on the front. Yeah, we do have very different uh, We do. We have podcasts, different we? styles. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. Which is why you should all listen to both of them because they're both yeah. awesome we, in their own I, special way. I literally do not edit the show unless a guest wants me to and says please take that out and I will. But if I knock over a coffee cup and say, oh, sh- I, it's in the show. That's the way it goes. That's life. Um, I script mine pretty hard because I'm always a little nervous that I'm going to say something super dumb. And I say dumb things anyway. But So I don't know why I bothered to do that. But I feel like it helps the guests be really prepared. I think the other thing that is different about ours is that um, I think we tend to be more topically focused. Like each one is kind of its own little capsule of topics and yes. you go broader with yours too yeah and the, the, you know what i say in the intro of helping sales radio is we talk about the full customer journey we talk to people in marketing we talk to people in support mm-hmm. you know there's a few times when we talk to people who don't even care about enterprise anything um and i in fact i might give an example of one yeah what we're we going to talk about today should we tell them or is this you and me just having a good time we're just going to have a good time okay, okay. i have That's tons cool. of questions i'm very curious about your podcast. So I'm going to ask you a lot of questions about the podcast. Okay, so let's. So what we were going to, what Chris and I thought we would do is talk to each other about each other's podcast. But then the core of this is to share um, some of our favorite episodes from the two podcasts because we talked to a lot of people in enterprise software and some very smart people and some people who have written books and people who are practitioners that do the thing. And so yeah, um, let's let's do that. And then we'll take yeah. audience questions. And there's a microphone right in the middle. Yeah. So when you're ready to ask a question, like in the last I don't know, half an hour or so. We'll go up to the mic and let's do this. Okay, how, how do we want to start? You have, well, I have a question. She scripted some questions. I do. I have a little mini script. So if you're ever on our podcast, I have you notes. can count on getting a script. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's true. yeah, you will have prep calls with Kristen. You won't have a prep call with me. <laughs> I think that's okay. We had fun. We had fun doing our promo for this thing out in CS100. Okay, and so that was totally unscripted. Did anyone hear the little three minute promo? Oh my gosh, yeah. we have listeners. Oh my Yay! gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at all the listeners. Yeah. So, quite literally, we were at the CS100 Summit, right? And I brought my microphones with me because just in case. And, we, and I saw your microphones and I was like, oh, and you we said, should record a promo. And so, without giving her any time to think about it, I put a microphone in her face. Okay, yeah. let's do it right now. Here's, here, let's do it. Yeah, it's, no, I think it came out great. I think that's the beauty of podcasts. It's two people having a conversation. It is. It's not, there's no producers, there's no commercials. I have a producer. You have a producer? I do, Zara. Can you stand up? Zara, She's you're a producer? Back. She's Woo! our producer. She's awesome. I don't have a she producer. She does everything for us. So for us, um, I do all the um, scripting and okay. um, the interviewing. And Zara helps me line up guests and helps with the scheduling and then does all the pr- post-production work yep. and coordinates all of that for us. Yep. So, yeah. And well, how do you do it? 
don't know, I send a Zoom link out, <laughs> press record. <laughs> it, it, it's, uh, it's also why I don't edit. It's strategic, so it's less work to do. Yeah. Simple as that. It's not that complicated. I mean, yes, it's authentic that I want to have a natural, I want to shoot yeah. the breeze with someone smart and hope I learn something. Yeah. That's true. But also, do you know how hard it is to edit? And like wait there and zip and zoom in and cut and trim and oh, it's awful. I mean, why would you ever want to do that for a living? And you know, people love it, but not we, me. We actually don't really have to do much editing for most of ours. Like there are some that are a little rougher than others. Sure, and so sure. the, the rough ones we edit, but, yep. but there's a lot of good ones. Yep. Yeah, that just, I'm getting myself edited more than the other person's getting oh. edited. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so you're self-conscious about yeah. that. Right? Who <laughs> thinks they want to do a podcast ever? Who's ever thought about it? Nobody. Oh, a few of them. Oh, oh, okay. There's like 10 of them. Okay. So then the question becomes, what's the equipment? What's your, what do you use to, okay, to do this? Okay, so I, um, I travel a lot. I've been on the road most of this year. And so this is my podcasting equipment right here. It is a laptop and a little tiny headset thing that is very easy to pack and travel with. And that's what I record on. And we use a tool called Zencaster. And that's our um, technology that we use. And Zara, what do you use for editing? Adobe. Adobe? Yeah. Okay. Fancy. Cool. So that you have much. I I jazzed up this one with our <laughs> branding, but um, what uh, what's your equipment? If what what I'm holding now is my equipment. Okay. Um, and it looks a lot fancier than it actually is. So, this is a box of three Behringer 1800 ultrasound S's. Thirty nine ninety nine for a three pack of these microphones. From okay. Amazon. From Amazon. $13.33 per mic. This boom, reticulating boom <laughs> mic thing is $10.83. And the XLR wire, XLR to USB mic is $9.87. So for less than the cost of those stupid Apple earbud <laughs> wire things that break, those are what? Those are 30 bucks, right? Or 40 bucks? I get this, baby. And 40 bucks. For the equipment. Now, I do get a little fancy. This mic box, these are $50 each. These this are not This is the cheap. most expensive yeah. part of his setup, <laughs> yes. is these little things that go around the mics. That's correct. Yeah. And this, I have a little mixer on the table here. It's called a Zoom H6. This is $400. This is expensive stuff. And this is something like this is the only way you could have multiple microphones in the same room, right? So everything goes into this, and then this goes into the computer. All right, so you have to have this if you want to have multiple mics. But if you're just doing the Zencaster yep. or I use Zoom as my recording, I, you can just plug right into the computer. You don't even need that. Yeah. Right. So when we have international guests, we just have them get something along these lines, plug into their computer, yep. and then they yep. can just record while we're recording. And it's great. It works out well. And then, it, and then iTunes happens, and then it's yeah. know, whatever. So the barriers to entry for podcasting are pretty low. Yeah, the very entry is the work. Yeah, it's it really is. It's, it's a consuming. lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, why did you start your podcast? Sarah E. Brown made me do it. And, okay. Uh, she, she was on when I did my first So she and I co-hosted Helping Sales Radio. Yeah. If anyone ever listened to the first, I don't know, 67 episodes or so, we co-hosted. It was a fun project, the two of us. And frankly, uh, there's two ways to answer this question. It was our, 80, it was our 20% time if we have that, right? It was a sort of a side project. Yeah. Um, but attention is going to the earbuds, right? People are listening, to doing things with this while they're doing other things, right? That's where the attention is going. So if you want to reach people, you better be in their ears, right? Uh, or, or on Instagram, or forget about it, right? So that's kind of why. Okay. And also, the other answer is, oh my gosh, I call people who wrote books, and I say, you want to be on my podcast? And they say, yes, when can I be on? Now I have PR agencies calling me saying, yeah. pitching me authors, can they be on your podcast, Bill? And I say, I don't know, you have to convince me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's why, and it's unbelievable how I get to get them. Sometimes they even send me a free book occasionally. So I, I can read, I don't Free books, yay. Free books, yeah, totally. Yeah, so I get cool. the book, I read it, and I ask a bunch of dumb questions, and, they, and I learn stuff, and like a little personal project for me. That's, yeah. that's why. Okay, cool. Yeah. And indirectly, I'm promoting Service Rocket, of course, because 
you know, it's Service Rocket Media is the production company. You know, oh, behind awesome. this whole operation, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, why yeah. did you do yours? Um, I was looking for something to do with Strike Deck. And my approach to working with the different software vendors has been to try to do something unique with each one. Yeah. And uh, I think um, Sonia, who was the original marketing person that I was working with, um, had originally approached me and said, hey, do you want to do a webinar? And I was kind of like, ah, oh, another webinar. And I had been listening to a lot of podcasts, and I had just listened to a podcast um, that was one called um, Stuff Your Mom Never Told You. It's kind of a feminist oh. podcast. And one of the things that they said on the podcast that I listened to was um, that women have a tendency to wait until they're really good at stuff before they do it. Oh. And to train and train and, and try to get to be an expert before they put themselves out there. And um, that men have a tendency to just go for it. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? I've been wanting to do a podcast and I'm just <laughs> going to go for it. So I talked Sonia from Strike Deck into doing this when he was a project. And it's been fantastic. I think one of the things that I, I love that I, I've gotten to do is really highlight a lot of our customers that have been doing really cool things go. in customer success and really talk to people that are doing really innovative mm -hmm. things in our field. And, and that's been fun for me and great for our practice. Yeah. I learn something every single time I interview somebody. Totally, so, yes. Yeah, that it's is great. The, that yeah. is the mother load of the podcast. It, it is. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now what are we doing? I want to. I want to. It's all very organized, people. As you can. As you can uh, I am. Say. I'm following my script. Um, <laughs> I don't know. We had kind of talked about this before. I want to hear about your favorite episodes. Maybe we can trade off the favorite episodes. Okay. That's, what's your favorite episode? Um, I have a lot of them. I think probably a all-time favorite. Um, well, I have two sort of all-time favorites. So John Leno from Service Titan was on and. What I loved about his was that he has a really cool project he's doing called his Align Campaign. And it's a way that they are aligning their customers and their customer success efforts around the business outcomes that their customers are after in a really scalable way. So it's, it's really um, a pretty cool approach. And I love it that it's something that you could apply to um, a, like a digital customer success program. Yep. So, so I loved talking to him about that one, and I think he takes a really interesting approach to customer success, and he's kind of on the cutting edge of what companies are doing in our field right now. So I, that was a fun conversation. And my second favorite one was one with um, a guy who was on our advisory board for a while called Steve Schwartz, and we talked about all uh, of our favorite books. Oh. And it was just a podcast about all the books I that didn't we loved. To that one. Yeah, it's an older mm. one, but as I was looking through my podcast list, I was like, oh yeah, that conversation with Steve. We talked about customer success books, we talked about leadership books, we talked about other random books that we had been reading. I had been reading The Handmaid's Tale, and you just, so many things. That was a fun yeah. episode. I was, yeah. I was about to ask you, before you said that, that you really stick to the customer success topic. Yes. VPs of customer success. Yes. And all the different elements of that. Yeah. I mean, I think there's plenty there to work yeah. with for, and for us, since that's our, our area of specialty, I really like yep. to focus on it. I think you go much broader. So I'd love to hear your favorite episode. Okay. Yeah. Well, my favorite episode was episode number 62 with Kristen Hare. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> You've just made up for the first part of this episode. <laughs> you know what? It's, it's, this is a true story. So she got here a little early and we were talking and, and we were looking at each other's list and I had her on my list and I noticed she didn't have me on her list. <laughs> he has been on the podcast before too. So anyway. I figured we let's were move on. Here. It's fine. It's fine. Shall we move on? <laughs> um, I I did like the episode with you though because uh, the topic was we suck at this. This is sort of my words, but you know we suck at data, and yeah. you were saying B two C companies use data really well and they know how to mine that and then yeah. figure out oh sell this person another camera. Yeah. And like we B2B people, we just have no clue. We just don't yeah. do it. I mean, maybe some of you do, but I mean, broadly speaking, we're not getting into our Hadoop instance and trying to, you know, come on. We're not yeah. doing that. Yeah. The customer said to me they want a green button. So obviously we need to change the project for green buttons product team. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. So that, no, that, that was a fun conversation. Yeah. And then the other thing that you schooled me on was uh, that, um, there are no learning styles. What was it? Oh, yeah. 
Because, you know, my topic on her show is uh, training and education. Yeah. And she was asking me, yeah. She said, oh, yeah, because people have different learning styles. And you have to, I said, no, they don't. That's impossible. That's, no. Debunk. No such thing. I don't know if I totally agree with this still, but. Yeah. I know. People don't agree with um, facts all the time. That's, that's true. <laughs> And I told you, I told you the story. I was like, oh, I'm going to have to change one of my slides in my training. <laughs> I was trying to help Kristen understand that learning styles are kind of like preferences. Like, yeah, I prefer pizza, but you know what? It's not healthy, right? Sorry. I prefer pizza over Brussels sprouts. But I prefer visuals. You prefer that, but that's not how you learn. That was my point I was making to her. Even okay. I prefer I prefer <laughs> audio. So this is my favorite episode list. But this is why she didn't she crossed me. I'm like, nope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm really a good guest, I swear. No, okay. We're a great guest. Uh what else? Who, who else is on no, your list? Who else is on my list? Yeah, let's do Let's see. It. Oh. Um I got lost. I gotta call out Kim Oslo because she was my very first guest. Ooh, the and first guest. Very first guest. Did you do non guest episodes? I don't know this. No. Or just the, the first no, episode? No, that was my first episode. Whoa. And um, and she did a great job, and she put up with my uh, lack of experience in broadcasting. <laughs> and yeah. uh, she um, she talked about your first 90 days in a customer success leadership role, which I thought was a really great topic. And we haven't had anybody approach it in such an organized <laughs> way as her. So yeah. I, I thought she had a really cool yeah. approach. So she's one of my favorites, and I keep thinking, back to that one yep. and I've referred a lot of people back to that one even though it's That's sort of cool. embarrassing on my part but yeah yeah it's the first episode That's yeah it takes a while to get used to this how did you get to you're in the 60s now yeah what are you up to you're 100, 147 yeah. and I have like three recorded on my computer now like that uh -huh. haven't been edited yet yeah I don't mean editing like in the middle. I mean the ends oh. gotta add the music <laughs> Sure, sure. I've just been called out. <laughs> yeah, 140 something. Oh, okay. But how did you know you were going to get past? You're at 62. Mm -hmm. How did you know you were going to get past the first five? Um, I didn't, and yeah. um, we just kind of kept going, and we we did have. I will say we did have a pause the first summer. We yep. started in I think December of 2016. And by the middle of 2017, we kind of had, had run out of our guests and we hadn't been uh, keeping yeah. up. We release a new episode every other week. And so uh, we hadn't kept up. And so we had to do a little blurb that, you know, you hear on podcasts all the time, like, hey, there'll be some more episodes in a few months. Um, and then get caught back up on our episodes. But we haven't had to do that since. Yeah, yeah. And so I think once we got past that point, um, we knew that we were going to keep going. And That's pretty good. I, I love it. I I find that it's really helpful for my consulting practice. Are you getting business? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I've had guests twice tell me that someone listened to the, the episode of Developing Sales Radio about them and they hired that person. That's yeah. happened twice. That's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. I said, and where's my 10%? <laughs> 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 it's not a charity. Anyway. Yeah, no, I, I think it's it's great. I, I learn a ton. Totally. So tell me about another favorite Okay. Of yours. Yeah, we don't do all customer success podcasts, but my first two are customer success people. So I want to call it episode 81. It's Allison Pickens. I think you all know who she is. Um, she, if you don't, chief customer officer at Gainsight. Um, we, what? She's like the chief operating officer. She's COO now? She's got promoted? Speaking of, okay, well, I didn't know that. Hell. LinkedIn.com slash. Okay. Uh, I talked to her about, you know, outcomes. And if you listen to the show, I challenge customer success people a lot. And I say, when are we going to actually talk about customer success and not our success? Because all we talk about all day long <laughs> is our churn and blah, blah, blah. It's all like, hey, hello, hello, there's a customer out there. What about them? And so we even have customer in the name of our titles. And somehow we're talking about our stuff. So I challenge them and they tell me, yeah, yeah, they give me answers that, that don't make me happy. But she said that the ultimate outcome is when your customer gets promoted because they implemented your software. That was a cool little insight that we talked about because, I mean, think about it. We should all be doing some API call on our software in LinkedIn and finding out when our <coughs> customers are changing jobs and like running that report. Yeah. The that's hell a about report. usage and like logged in six times this week. Who cares? Yeah. Did the customer get promoted? That's what I want to know. Yeah. That's that was one. cool. So she's she's smart. 
Yeah. That's my point. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. That's a good yeah. One. How about you? What's yours? Uh, Next one. Are we running out? No, I still have a couple more. Okay. You have a couple more? I'm going to take a high. Okay. So many more. My feed um, just keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> Shane Metcalf, 15.5. Um, that was a really good one, too. We talked about how to motivate your customer success team. And their uh, product good. is a product that is around employee performance and um, motivating and communicating effectively with your employees. And so I love that episode. I I, as a you know former um, leader in, of customer success teams and sales teams, um, motivation of your team is really critical, and I love talking about that. And so that was a really fun one, and we had a really That's good time. Cool. And he's super creative in that area, and so they um, they have a product around it, but they also do a lot of that inside their own team, and they have some really interesting motivational things they do in their group. And so. That was a really fun conversation. I enjoyed talking with him. So those are interesting. See, now 15.5 has some kind of an employee engagement. Yeah, they have an right? employee engagement and performance. So tool. it's like, are the, see, I would take that interview with, are you doing internally what you do when you sell they to are. customers? Right? Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good, yeah, that's it good was, angle. It was good. And and they are, they are walking the walk. Really? So, yeah. They're very committed to it, and it's great. It's yeah, great to cool. hear. It's kind of like if you sell sales software, uh -huh. and you you to a sales team. Yeah. Are you good at sales? Yeah. And are you? They're not always. Think about being a customer <laughs> success manager for a sales team. Can you help them sell better? Yeah. Like whoa. Yeah, I have to say one of the worst salespeople that has ever engaged with me uh, was trying to sell me a CRM system. Come on. <laughs> no, it's true. The cobblers, was, children was, have no whatever. Yeah, yeah. Have no iPad. No game. Yeah. No sales game. So, yeah, what's your next one? Okay, I'm going to go off the topic a little bit, but um, episode 67 was with a uh, Harvard Law professor who wrote a book called Smart Collaboration. Her name is Heidi Gardner. And I can't believe a Harvard professor said, yes, I'll be on your podcast. I'm like, um, I hope Zoom works today, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. So of course I read her book and of course I prepared for that. Uh, I prepare for all the podcasts, but I just don't like read the script. But um, her insight <laughs> in her book was really cool. She's talking ab about professional services organizations and how they have silos of expertise, right? They're doing different implementations in different business units of their customers. Think about Accenture at the extreme. You know, they're helping all kinds of verticals, let's say. Her research shows that when, when internal consulting teams collaborate across silos in the interest of the customer, revenues go up. So if I'm doing the ERP implementation and that's my team, and I hear in the through the you know between the lines that my customer is saying they're having trouble with risk management and their compliance and all that, I say, hey, Joe is our VP of risk management practice, and you say to your customer, hey. I heard you heard, can I bring in Joe from our risk management just to have a conversation? And she bring in other practices. So to me, and she says, the more practices you bring in, there's a correlation between the increase in your revenue. And she has data to back this up. And it's absolutely brilliant. And I just wonder, all of us in SaaS and customer success, like how often do we in customer success bring in other teams? So I'll just give you an example of us, LearnDot. Um, sometimes our customers say, we need help marketing our training. Now, strictly speaking, we don't have a service that says training marketing solution for you. We're gonna help you with your Facebook ads or whatever it is. We just help with the software and how do you make the training good, let's say. But why can't I talk to our marketing team and say, hey, customers need help with marketing. Why don't we bring you in and maybe we figure this out, right? And maybe that becomes an offering. Of course, we've done that once out of, out of six years, so it's not like we're good at it. But I, you know, I listen to this episode and I say, whoa, why aren't we doing that? So Heidi Gardner, episode 67, download it today. Okay, so anyway. you brought up, I hope Zoom works. Have you ever had anything go horribly wrong with an episode? No. Really, never? That's a lot of episodes to not have anything go wrong. I'm really thinking, mm, occasionally the audio isn't very good. Occasionally there is, you know, like the connection drops. Uh-huh. 
But then you sort of just stop and you cut that part out and you redo the question and oh, you keep editing. going. <laughs> Hold on, everyone pay attention to what I'm about to say. We hardly ever edit the show. Anyway, um, have you had anything bad happen? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so one of the downsides of scripting, um, to be honest, is that it's a script, and some of our guests before we started saying, "Hey, it really works best if you do your answers in bullets." would actually write out every word that they were going to say. And we had one guest, and I'm not going to name any names, who the first time I'm around... I'm sure you it wasn't me. ...was so scripted sounding, it sounded like a robot. Oh, and yeah. we listened to it, and we tried to edit it, and we tried to make it work, and we just ended up having to be really honest with her and say, we need to re-record this because it just can't go out like this. Um, so that was really our biggest disaster. I mean, there's been... That's hard. I've never had to do that. That's hard. Yeah. We also had to tell somebody that the topic, she, we had one where she just did not know her topic well enough. Really? And we got into the interview and it just ended up being a really short interview and we couldn't publish that one either. So, I have found, yeah. speaking of that, a major, major monumental factor of a hundred difference between an author of a book and a regular VP who's smart at what they do. The person who wrote the book needs no prep. They know what they're doing. In fact, all I have to do is say hi, and they could just do the whole podcast because they're, they, this is what they do. But if you're a VP of whatever, you just do your job. You're just good at it. I, so I ask the questions. So how do you do it? You're like, I don't know. I just sort of you know, work do hard. And, you know, my team is smart. And we job. figure it out. I yeah. don't know. I mean, you know. Of course you know. But it's, it's not that everyone who's not an author isn't good. But um, I mean, somewhat like you're saying, it's like yeah. you sort of – it, it, it might not be that they don't know it. It might be they're yeah. not good at communicating it or nervous yeah. on the, I don't know. I think nervous was part of it and yeah. just was, wasn't was able to get into enough detail that it yeah. was going to be a valuable podcast. So that happened. And then we've had a, a number of times when my Wi-Fi was unstable or oh, the other right. person's Wi-Fi, Zara, poor Zara, has had to deal with us a few times. We've been remodeling our house and I work from a home office when I'm here in the Bay Area and so that's been... A, a Wi-Fi challenge, so I actually ended up yeah. having to take workspace because I just can't keep working at home and trying to record podcasts that cut out halfway through. So yeah, yeah. so that's been kind of the biggest disasters for us. I thought you would have more. That you have like double the episodes we have. I uh, I don't think so. You didn't ever drop anything on your equipment or. Well, yeah, but big deal. Or... Just like you know, leave it in yeah. the episode. All right. Really. Uh, a couple of times, in the first maybe 50 episodes, the hardest thing for me was interrupting the guest to at, to interject and ask a question and keep it moving along. There was one episode where the woman just went on forever and I was nervous about interrupting. And um, I think that's, I mean, it's like bad manners to interrupt. On the other hand, it's also bad podcasting. Yeah. You have to, I'm getting a little better at this, but I'm still a little tentative. You have to interrupt. Because so you go, whoa, 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 you just said something cool there, blah, 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 and then you mm -hmm. can, yeah. then you sort of keep it going. Because if you just let the person go, no matter how smart it is, it's like on and on and on. And, I, and so I've had a couple like that, and I think those are bad podcasts. It's bad hosting. It's bad, you know. Yeah. I have had that happen once or twice, and I feel like we kept it in. Um, and yeah. it probably wasn't our best episode. I kept it in too in this yeah. episode. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, you do get better. You kind of learn how to talk. Like I'm like right now, I'll interrupt yeah. you and say, you learn how to yeah. yeah, you learn how interrupt. to talk and interrupt and yeah. do it in a way that sounds like broadcasting, I think. That's right. So, That's yeah. Right. You sort of wait for the... You sort yeah, of wait for the, so if you, if you want to listen to... Um, nice, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, if you want to listen to our podcast, I don't know how yours is, but the first 10 episodes are, are not my best work. Totally, yes. By a long shot. So if you listen to the first yeah. episode of Healthy Cells Radio, the intro before the music says, um, I say something like, I think we're going we're gonna to take at least 100 of these before we get any good. And Sarah yeah. said, well, why don't we start with number one? That's how we started the show. Our, our intention, we knew we were going to be bad for 99 episodes, and we just baked that into our attitude, and we said, and we're going to do 100 before we even decide if we're going to do what we're going to do with the show. So, 
You're gonna be See, I just went barreling in with totally unearned confidence and like started doing them, and then yeah. I looked back on them and I was like, oh, that was terrible. You know when he goes back to the old episodes, right? I, I listen to them and then I listen to a few and then I won't listen to it anymore. No, I don't uh, go back and listen after I, after the editing is done. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, how about um, one more guest? One more oh, favorite episode? Okay. Each. Let's um, do it. Okay, you do yours. You do mine? Mm -hmm. I have two left. I don't know which one to pick. I think um, I'm going to pick a, a one that's not customer success. So um, there's a there's a guy named Jay Akunzo, and he wrote a book called uh, Break the Wheel, and he was challenging the value of best practices, and saying that well, why do you want to do what someone else does, and why do you want to do something that was a best practice. Because if you hear about the best practice, it was what someone did five years ago, right? And they planned that five years before that. Now you're back in the 70s. And really, that's your best practice? And so what he was saying is, we should use more intuition. Your goal is not to find the best practice. Your goal is to find the best solution to what you want to accomplish. And yes, you can learn from what other people do, but you learn from that, you ask questions, and then you use intuition to make a decision that works for you. And so I just thought that was an interesting insight that he talked about. Um, yeah. Throwing the best practices thing. We because we throw that word around like Yeah. Like I don't like, you know, the other four letter words. But Yeah. That was a really good episode. Yeah. And he wrote a book and he's of course really good at explaining why that matters to him and, and yeah. uh, it was a good book too and all that. Oh that's cool. Yeah, I, I like that you guys do a lot of authors. You do I did authors too. on yours. That's yeah. cool. I like to read, so I think that's interesting when you actually hear from the Have the you ever writer. bought a book from an author you heard on Helping Sales Radio? I have not. I have had, I think, a few books, though, books already. Yeah. No, are you trying to sell the book? Yes, I'm trying to sell the book. Do you get a kickback nah. for the book sales? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, Amazon Associates, like, like three cents on a book? Yeah. yeah. No, I do not, but uh, yeah. yeah. No, I, I was thinking, I've had a lot of really good episodes, and so it, it was hard to kind of it go was. back and pick pick episodes that so I I'm, I'm looking really at my liked. list of all, uh, and I just like, oh, I can pick yeah. all these. Anyway. I think... I mean, I'm just going to say, Irene, like, I feel like the first one you and I did, because you and I have done a couple of them. She's we, been on twice? She's been on twice. She won't yeah. come on my show anymore. She went oh. on once. I know. Um, no, Irene and I talked about um, the, the way that your generation impacts how you engage in the workplace. And I, I find myself still thinking back to that episode as I'm working with people in our field because I, we work with a lot of different kinds of companies and they have CSMs and leaders that are in all different generations, you know, baby boomers, Gen Xers, millennials, Gen Z is coming online right now. It's just crazy. That's my daughter's generation. And so I, I think about that a lot because I think it has a direct impact on how we engage with our customers because I think that this the younger generations that are coming into buying positions in our field, um, they're our customers now. And so the expectations that they have for how they're going to engage with companies, you know, as a buyer is high. I mean, we all as consumers have very high expectations for how we're going to engage with our brands that we buy. And I think that that has now crept into B2B. And so I find myself thinking about that episode a lot because I think that that heavily plays into why customer success is so important now. So that was a great episode. I liked that one. I have nice. another question for you. Okay, hit me. Okay. No, I'm the, nervous. This is a tough one. You ready? No, I'm not ready. <laughs> I haven't this out what, What's the biggest thing that you've learned from having done all of these podcasts? You think I'm not self-aware? I have no idea. Uh, honestly, I don't think of it like that. I just like do the next one. I think, frankly, I think that um, it's that I can do it. Uh -huh. and that's it's nothing more than that. Like, I, yeah. you look back as 147 episodes, really? Yeah. That's impossible. When you start, it's like if you see these other podcasts out there that have hundreds and hundreds, and you think it, it's just impossible. How could you do that? And then one day you wake up and there's and they're I there. know. That's that's it. It was crazy to me when we hit 50. I was I, I was thinking, how on earth, yeah. when we only release every other week, are we already at 50 episodes? And I'm like, that's two years worth of work. Yeah. 
you know, and it just goes by like that. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing about, the, uh, this is the thing about anything, like learning anything. Like you read a book and how much do you remember of the book you just read, right? Like, I will admit it. I remember practically nothing, like 1%. Like it just go, <laughs> I just go on to the next book. And it's the same with like the podcast. I, I spoke with the law, Harvard law professor, Heidi Gardner. Hello. She came onto my show and I can't remember. <laughs> I have to go back and listen again. It's just like in the moment I'm, I'm listening, I'm interested, I have some notes. But how many of you go back and look at your notes? Like, I don't. I'm sorry. I moved on to the next. So I'm embarrassed to kind of say that, but I just want to move on to the next and then learn in that moment and then move on to the next. And maybe I learned a few things. And I, I, I guess I'm not that introspective. Well, so I got the chance because I'm the one that designed the questions. I got the chance to think about what my answer would have been to that. Yeah, what is your answer? It's better than yours. <laughs> No, my Maybe scripting is good. I don't know. <laughs> no, my um, what I what I was thinking was if I had to think back about all the episodes we've done, I think the biggest thing I've taken away, and I don't, I think this is because we're we're a very customer success focused mm -hmm. podcast. Yeah, is that every team is different in our field, still very different, and I think that that's okay. I think that there's kind of a push sometimes that we. Put, we put a push on ourselves, I think, in our field to try to be the same as and to try to standardize things and, and to try to have customer success be similar uh, from company to company. And I've thought about it a lot and I think there's some things that make it inherently different from like sales, where you can somewhat cookie cutter a sales organization. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can do that to a CS organization, is what I've arrived at, and I think that that's okay. I think there's you can have models that work across different kinds of teams, but I think that the differences in our field are really interesting, and they don't think they're bad. Yeah. And maybe that's because of where we are as a field right now um, in our lifespan, but I actually think part of it is because the customers we work with are so different from yeah. each other too. So I think that's my big takeaway from just hearing all the stories about all the cool things that all these leaders are doing. It's really different. Yeah. And I think that's great. And it's fun to hear about all the things people are trying. Okay, well, here you go. Here's the benefit of the podcast. So I, I hear that. And then yeah. I go back to the Jay Akunzo episode and, and the best practices. He's kind of saying the same thing. Yeah. He's saying, wait a minute, just because that's how it's done there with these eight companies. Doesn't mean you have to do it that way. Like yeah. relax, you don't yeah. have to follow that model. You can use a model and tweak three things and be just as good or better and do your thing. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Like relax, it's okay. You yeah. can do it your way. Yeah. So there you go. Cool. What so, do you think, we should take audience questions? Yeah. Are we ready? We I think we're the... ready. Irene has one. Hold on, I gotta turn on the mic. You guys wanna hear questions? Yeah. You can ask. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. Do you have a question or are you just moving the mic? I have a question. Okay. okay. What's your question? <laughs> so both of you guys have been doing your podcast for a while, and I love both of your podcasts. Thank, Thank you. you. And wow. um, I'm curious about not so much what you've learned from your podcast, but is there anything that you've applied from something you learned in a podcast? Is there something you've changed in what you've done? Yes, I can think learned of one. In a podcast. I changed my slide that talked about learning styles. <laughs> there you go. Hoorah! Howdy doody. <laughs> what was yours? <laughs> um, when I interviewed Tony Olwick, you know, he's the jobs to be done guy. He wrote the book on jobs to be done. I can't believe he. Okay. He's in the Clay Christensen book, right? Um, we started, we did two things. We changed the way we do our customer training to be the task job oriented kind of training. So we don't say, here's the feature tab, go click through the tab, now click here. You sort of say, hey, you have a report to run and, and run a management meeting to show the dashboard to your execs? Well, here's how you do it. And then here's how you create your slides and here's how you put your dashboard. Mm -hmm. So we just sort of do it that way, sort of job oriented training. And we start advising customers to do it that way too. So list the jobs your customers are doing and that's the training curriculum, right? For, forget that. I didn't say the F word, I said forget. I said forget this, <laughs> forget this feature stuff. Like what jobs are your customers doing? Let's make that list. Thank you. Now product managers don't like that, but you know, whatever. So that's, that's an example. Okay, thank you. Yep. So anyone else wants to come and ask a question? Another you question. have to come up and you do the mic so it gets the mic, Do you all know? Sure it's on the podcast. Yeah, because we're gonna take this recording and publish it yeah, out. Yeah, we're gonna put these on our podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. 
a long time listener, first time caller. Uh -oh. oh, thank you. I know that you're <laughs> legit. You're an, endurance, you're an endurance runner, right? Yes. You run like 50 miles uh, in, in a session? Sometimes. What do you listen yeah, to when you're doing that? That's the first part. The second part, what are your favorite non-customer success podcasts that you listen to? Okay. For both of you. Did okay. everyone hear the question? Oh, so we, that was a question about what podcasts do we listen to and yeah. also what you listen I don't know why you think I don't run. <laughs> Whoa. I didn't say that. <laughs> so what do you listen to when you run? Um, I do a lot of audio books, but the podcasts I listen to, so when I'm on a, a long run and I'm suffering, my go-to podcast is Jocko Podcast. Okay, see, he knows what I'm talking about. So this is a podcast by a former Navy SEAL, and this dude is hard core and, and the first half of every episode he basically reads through books about war oh. and I'm talking about like when the Chinese fought the Japanese a hundred a thousand years ago and it was awful and the book is gruesome and so the, the reason why I like it it sort of you know, keeps you grounded in reality that you know the world isn't all kale sandwiches and, and all that but um, when you're when I'm you know, on a run it just puts me in perspective it puts things in perspective for me. It's like there's a lot of hardcore stuff in the world and I should be grateful every day that I can sleep in a, co a nice bed. And so that's a go-to uh, podcast of mine. And, um, but other than that, I listen to a sports you know, once a week. To, so I, I don't watch a lot of TV. So at least I know what football team won. And I guess I care. I so 20 minutes on a podcast. I sort of get it. Okay. All right. Patriots won again. Uh, check. So. That's I, my, that's one. I, have, I listen to many, but. Yeah, I have two favorites. One is a current favorite and one is a longtime favorite. So my longtime favorite is How I Built This. It's an NPR podcast. That got me through some dark days when I was first starting this company. And that was one of the things that got me excited wow. about this podcast because you realize when you listen to that podcast, it's, <laughs> it's basically stories of entrepreneurs who've built these huge businesses, right? It's, um, it's companies like Cliff Bar and um, ben and Jerry's. Of course, I can remember the food ones. Um, there's a ton of them on there. Um, but but I, you realize when you listen to that that every company has this valley at some point where it's just hard to do everything. It's hard to get business. Disasters happen. And when you're in the building of the business process and you listen to that, it's yep. very soothing to understand that you're going through a process that's totally normal and every company goes through it. So as a CEO of a small company, that was a huge relief. I'm actually super excited because this coming month I'm going to the How I Built This um, uh, thing that is coming to San wow, Francisco. You're, you're a fan. <laughs> I'm, a, awesome. I'm a mega fan. That's I got awesome. the VIP package. No, you did <laughs> not. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna treat myself, and I'm going to it. And so I'm That's very awesome. excited. It, um, Guy Raz is the host of that one, and it is fantastic. So listen to that. Um, and then my other one, and this is totally cheesy, and on the other end of the spectrum, I love the TV show The Good Place. Does anyone yeah. watch that? <laughs> so The Good Place has a podcast, and it is the you know the character Sean, who's a demon in there. Um, it is he's the host. And he's fantastic. And all the actors and actresses and writers and producers come on to the show in various episodes. And if you are a fan of The Good Place, you will love that podcast. So that's my current one that I love listening to. Can I alter the question and, and share my favorite all-time podcast of any podcast for any episode in the history of the world ever? Is it Strike Deck Radio? I can name it. Huh? <laughs> Is it what? Strike Deck Radio. No. <laughs> And when you were when you brought up the NPR, I was uh -huh. thinking I can't listen to NPR. It's too scripted and organized, and I'm not going to do it. I just can't. Really? Well, yeah, because we script it, and we we uh, I can't do it. Anyway, oh. um, right. I listen to that Reed Hoffman podcast, the the Bastards of Scale. I can't do it. I can't I can't get past the ten, first ten minutes. It's all edited and and, and like <coughs> inserting clips. I can't do it. Anyway, let's move on. My favorite episode of all time, you have to listen to this episode. Does anyone know who Sarah Blakely is? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Does anyone know who James Altucher is? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so James Altucher has a podcast. I mean, this guy has millions of listeners. He's kind of a weirdo, hair, and... Uh, okay. Um, he interviewed Sarah Blakely, 
about her coming up from nothing and doing her thing. It is the most unbelievable story you ever heard. If you don't know the story of her selling fax machines right out of her apartment, if you don't know how she bullied her way into the Neiman Marcus office and, and said to the Neiman Marcus woman, come into the bathroom with me, I, and she put on her first Spanx, and the woman in Neiman Marcus who's all dressed nicely in Dallas, and Sarah Blakely comes in, her torn t-shirt, her messed up hair, doesn't know what the hell she's doing every day, and she puts it on and says, see, look, now my dress is smooth. And the, and the Neiman Marcus lady going, oh my God, it works, I'll yeah. buy 10,000. And if you don't know the story of Sarah Blakely getting her first, you know, the stretchy part, going to the manufacturer in North Carolina, and, and he says, she thinks he says he can make it. So she, that's why she went to Dallas to get the meeting. And then Neiman Marcus gave her the order. She went back to the North Carolina manufacturer and she said, I have an order. He said, you what? I can't make your spanks. She says, what the hell? You said you could. It's, she, he said, you don't have a crotch. Now, what the hell is a crotch? You're in the pantyhose. You're not in the middle of the crotch, right? <laughs> you don't have a crotch. She goes, what's a crotch? And you know what she did? She, so the, obviously the manufacturer couldn't make the crotches. He only makes the other part. So someone else has to make the crotch. So she went to the yellow pages looking up crotch <laughs> like this. That's this, how this dumb and really genius this woman is. Turn. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the whole story of her knowing nothing every moment and still going to the next thing. I don't know what a crotch is. I don't know where Neiman Market is. I don't know how to sell anything. And she still does it. And this whole episode is like this. And you're on the edge of your seat. And yet when you're running in the woods, you step on a rattlesnake because you don't care because you listen to Sarah Blake. They tell the story and you're engrossed. And if you want to know how anybody does anything from nothing to something, and you think they're really smart and know what they're doing, and they really don't, <laughs> you're like, wow. So, best episode That's a ever. fantastic story. Yeah. Just, Her just, story is great. And you, you think it's cool to speak yeah. to it for me. Imagine if it's from her directly. Yeah. And James Altucher has a really cool way of interviewing. He asks really good, dumb questions. And he interrupts really well. And it's... It's, it's, it brings out things from people. Yeah. The way she told her. Anyway, Sarah Blakely's James Altucher, <laughs> buy it today. Cool. So. What other questions? Go up to the mic. All right. We're here doing we go. it Comic Con style here. Yeah. Would any of, you, any of you or both of you consider going video with your podcast? Video is hardcore. Yeah, I, I think I have a face for radio. <laughs> so I'm going to stick to this for now. No, I, I, uh, it's hard enough to hear yourself recorded. I think, like, I have a hard time listening to myself. I don't know that I also want to see myself. But, yeah. Me, I think video is, um, I'm not afraid to do the video on, online necessarily, but the work First of all, the complexity of adding video to broadcasting is really, really, really hard for me. I don't really get it. This is hard enough, good grief. But the editing and the clipping, and the, and the it's really time consuming. I just don't wanna do it. Well, all that said, we're kind of on video now. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> but so I guess different. it's not that hard. <laughs> so I have, a, I have a related question. Yeah. What generation are both of you from? Oh, well, you're you. asking me how I already, know, I already know that you're both Gen Xers. I'm a millennial. You're a millennial? <laughs> Holla! Really? Yes. Okay, well, millennials are supposed to be in the video, and Gen Xers are supposed to be in the audience. See that phone right there? That's Facebook Live, baby. Right there. Hi, Facebook. I don't even know if it's, if it's working. I have no idea. Are you really a millennial? Millennial is an attitude. No, oh, then I'm a, I'm a Gen Z. Then. I'm a Gen, a Gen X. I'm a Gen X. Yeah. Gen X. But I, I, the whole gen, the whole generation thing. I like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I have coworkers who are 22 and they're smarter than me, and I have and, and dumber than me and equal to me, and I don't even. It doesn't even occur to me. It's anyway. Okay. Hi. Hi. Um. Right. You have an amazing voice, and yeah, I do. Uh, you're Christine. Yes. You have amazing jabs, and the interplay between you two is amazing. So. Oh, thank See, you. See, even you recognize the jabs she does at me, insulting me every single time. All the time. Kind of does go both ways. 
Um, I love radio. I listen to radio all the time. Grew up listening to radio. I have a little radio at home that I listen to. So. Radio is way better than TV, right? So, <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the stories that you, I think, listening really does more to you for you than it because you have one attention span. I think when you're listening, and and you can do the imagery in your own head, and that really is great. But anyway, so um, thank you for doing that. I've never listened to your podcast, so do forgive me. I'll do that from now on. Oh, no. Yeah, I think there's a lot you should watch. You know, it's free. Free, free. <laughs> you can get it on your phone. <laughs> oh, I can do that too. So um, why did you think this would be the best channel for you to share your messages um, to the, the public? Why, why did you pick this particular channel? Thank you. I have an answer. Okay, you go oh, first, and then I'll, I'll go next. Oh. Um, that's a really good question, actually, because yeah. um, I think of it two ways. One, where is the attention going in the world? Right? Attention matters. If you're not on Instagram, you have earbuds on, and you're listening to something. Everything else doesn't matter. There's a billboard right in front of me, and what do I do? I walk, I walk by it, you know, doing my Instagram thing. That's what people do. And so for the audio, the magic of audio nowadays is because of the phone, the audio can go with me. I don't have to get in the car to listen. And I don't have to sit in my Barca lounger with a gigantic brown furniture radio and record player and listen. I can be doing the dishes. I can go outside and, and mow the lawn. I can go for a four hour run and listen to 17 podcast episodes in a row on 2.5 X. Yes, I really listen to it on 2.5x speed. <laughs> that is legit. You want to, I'll show you my phone after. Um, and I can do other things as a listener. So, and me as a broadcaster, it's like, okay, I know people are going to be, if they want to do this, they can do it and do other things. That matters to me. Uh, and plus, you can just, really, we just talked about our equipment. For $40, yeah. we can plug this in and start talking and communicate a message to the world, whatever that message is. I thought about doing another podcast called The Daddy Show, and just me interviewing my kids. I just turn on the microphone, sit at the dinner table, and say, hey, Elizabeth, what was in school today? She's like, daddy, I don't want to, you know. I, don't, I, don't. Uh, I think I would get sponsors. Anyway, side note. Uh, you might until they're older, and then you're going to get one word answers. Well, I buy chain. That's what I buy chain. Are you sitting at the dinner table? How was is, how is school today? Fine. <laughs> What did what did your friends do? Stuff. Well, that's what I, I, get. I I think the magic would be like take them somewhere, and while you're doing it, you're on your way to the park or the. Then you have microphones, and you just yeah. You know, do the talking, and then maybe you have to edit the the parts where no one's talking. I don't. There would be nothing to edit for my daughter. It would just be the one word answers. Yeah, no, no. I if I edited anything, it would be gone. So that's it. No, that's I know. I think your podcast would be cool. Now I chose it because I wanted to have a way to interview people, and I think um, it's one of the best ways to interview people. Oh, I got yes. I got a lot out of listening to podcasts for the first couple years of this business, and so um, I wanted. I, I liked the interviewing style, and I don't know how else you would do that really smoothly other than video, and then there is that complexity with video that you don't have with. A lot of people with, are like, yeah. I don't want to be on video, because I do yeah. a video Zoom when I do it, so I am recording the video. I have hours and hours of video, but I only publish the audio, mm -hmm. and half the people get nervous if yeah. you publish the video. They don't mind the audio, yeah. but it's the video, so you know, some people aren't. Yeah. Yeah. I like I like the interviewing format. So that's, totally. That was my big driver. That's the thing. Yeah. That's <laughs> Whoa! Is that you? That is my wife's <laughs> ringtone. <laughs> that was a personal moment for you. <laughs> ACDC back in the day. <laughs> She's a fast machine. So now my kids. You know what kids do? She was a fast machine. <laughs> Someday I'm going to have to explain that. That, anyway. that is the best. So, so this is a question for Bill. Yeah. Yeah. you got to do this first, right? Oh, Angel. Yay. Right on. Uh, Angel Gloria from uh, Cloud Beast. Be um, there. So I'm asking this question to Bill for a couple of reasons. One, somebody has to ask. And secondly, you guys kind of have this uh, whole between the ferns vibe going on. I don't know if oh. you've ever seen that. Yeah. I don't know what that when is. When are you going to give that poor plant over there a drink? <laughs> Come on. Right? That is so yeah. sad. Some time, leave the plant alone. It's trying to live its life. <laughs> I can tell you. That's all I have. 
I think Zach has a question. That was your question, Angel? <laughs> that was his question. I was looking for my, you know, intelligent kind of probing question, but that was, that was on great. everyone's yeah. mind. So that was okay. Oh my gosh, well, now I feel guilty. Yeah, a little. Okay. Nice you. A little water? Um, other questions, you guys? Yeah, come on up. All right, let's do this. Ask about the plan. <laughs> Keeping track of podcasts, I know there's services like voice page, there's services like voice, voice based that have like speech to text, but have you run across any services that take the podcasts, index them so you can actually search them on a broader basis than just Ooh, having the text to search through? within the audio? Yeah. No. Okay. No. I have not. I've I heard think... of that, but I haven't. Product ideas. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think what some people do is they have, you know, they, they get someone on Upwork or something and they uh, they will transcribe the podcast and just yeah. publish that as show notes. Um, but no, I've not heard of that. That's actually pretty good. Because there's keywords within the audio, right? It's like, yeah. why not search for yeah. that? We, yeah. We actually had to change how we're putting the podcast titles out there so that they did have more of the subject in them and that's something we did recently because oh, so people can find it yeah. yeah i was having a hard time finding my own podcast episodes that i wanted to refer to people so yeah so thanks for both for being able to talk about this it's enlightening um what's like the podcast you wish you could do that you haven't quite figured out or gotten the right guest or topic what's kind of like on that's a great question that you wanted to do? <coughs> oh uh, well, for, I have two answers to that. One is a guest I've been trying to get that I haven't been able to get. I've been trying to get Tiffany Bova. She wrote the Growth IQ book, um, and um, she keeps rescheduling on me. She is scheduling with me, and then well, maybe she, she'll she, hear this. And apparently, then. she's busy. I don't know. Oh. Um, so I, I'm really trying to get her, and I'm and there is part of me that's just like like over it. Like, uh, over it, you know, so that's my millennials, you know, over it. Yeah. So, I'm, part of me just doesn't want to do the rescheduling. On the other hand, uh, the James Altucher show, he gets, uh, who's the billionaire, airline, white hair, long hair dude? Richard Branson. That guy. He waited like three years to get that guy on, right? So, I'm like, oh, well, if a famous person can't get a famous person, I'm a nobody, and she's semi-famous, it's like, I can wait. I'll, I'll, you know, whatever, it takes time. People are busy, and so... Um, but for a podcast, my other answer is, is there a podcast topic or show I would love to do that I haven't done? Um, I have like, in Evernote somewhere, I have a list of other podcasts I would do, like six other topics. One of them is The Daddy Show, right? Is that's I think that could be fun. I just talk to my kids. Uh, another one I would want to do is some kind of a being up in Tahoe, the local ski scene and just talk to people and do the weather report and get the shopkeeper from the ski shop dave dave ski shop in tata city and say hey dave what's you know what boots are working today and i don't know there could be a local person and a podcast that does a show every single day and introduce the lift operator on top of circ on top of summit six and just say uh, you know that kind of thing that could be a cool show too but you know, that'd be cool i'm busy i don't know yeah i would do those too yeah but, I, I have an episode I want to do. I want to do an, a deeper episode on hiring really great CSMs because I get questions about it all the time. And we've done some kind of tangential episodes, but we haven't done like a really rich episode on that. And I want to do that. But other podcasts, I have been thinking for a long time about a podcast where I interview female CEOs because as a female CEO, um, there aren't a lot of us. And... I want to encourage other women to step into this role because I've gotten to go through that process over the past four years and it's been fascinating. And I think if the, if other people knew what it was like, they would want to do it too. And so I would love to do that one, but I think I don't have the bandwidth right now. So that's probably a year or two away. Okay. So I was looking up Evernote just saw you were yeah. talking because um, that's a really good podcast. You could pull that off. What? The women CEOs, women CEOs one? Yeah, I know I could pull it off. I you, just don't have time. <laughs> you make time. Do you know how many CEOs would say yes? And you know every CEO. You do 200 interviews with 200 CEOs? Yeah. Whoa, do it. I, okay. I'm holding you accountable. Okay. You know that whole thing where you have to wait till you're an expert before you do it? You erase that. You can just call, yeah. call a CEO. Okay. Call Sarah Blakely right now. 
Oh. Where's the phone? Anyone have a phone? Okay. okay. Um, but I, I found my, I have 10 ideas for a podcast I would do if I didn't do Helping Souls Radio. Oh, look this at that. A, she, it's legit. You have something all, written down. It's me, incredible. Okay, see what you just did there? Do you see what just happened? What my life is like? Yes. Uh, so what is the, a show called The Outcome Engineer? Huh? Oh, that's huh? a good one. Huh? I like that uh, idea. The SAS Report. The next Silicon Valley enterprise tech experience. Okay, tell me lame. about the next Silicon Valley. What's that one about? I don't know. Silicon Valley. Yeah, is it, is it about Whatever. the other Silicon Valley? Yes, Salt Lake okay. City. Okay. I don't know. I like Austin. that one. I don't know. Tallahassee. You go visit all those places and interview people. Hmm? Whoa. That would be fun. I didn't even That'd think that. That would be a good one. Pretty good. Uh, what else do I have here? Uh, what, what can we accomplish? I don't know what that means. The Daddy Show, the Tahoe Podcast, Tech in Reno, uh, the Digital Transformation Show. That's lame. Uh, the new organization. That's lame too. I mean, it's like <laughs> most of my ideas are lame. But I'm reading them out loud. That's anyway. Did you have a question? I have a question. This uh -oh. podcast. So this must have happened when guest has said something that doesn't go well with you guys, right? And so, what are the top three things that has happened? And how do you handle it? How do you keep the conversation going forward where you haven't agreed with the guest perspective? Yes. So I had this one guest who didn't believe in learning styles. And I can turn off her mic. <laughs> 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 I <laughs> No, I, I think the biggest one is I, I come from a sales background and I pretty strongly believe that selling stuff to customers does not erode your trusted advisor status as long as you're not selling them stuff that they don't need. Um, that's a personal belief of mine. I would not have been successful as a salesperson if I had not developed a trusted advisor relationship with my clients. And so I really strongly believe that you can sell and be a trusted advisor. Um, I've had a lot of guests, because this is a pretty controversial topic in our field, I've had a lot of guests that feel very strongly that you should never sell as a customer success person. And so, um, you know, when those topics come up, and I'd say that's probably the biggest one where there have been people on the podcast that I did not agree with personally, but I, I, I will question what they have to say, but I also think that they have a valid perspective and sometimes the CSM really shouldn't be selling. And so I want to hear what they have to say. So I guess I have a tendency to react to that with questions and then maybe sometimes some teasing too, because I think we all need to be a little more lighthearted about the things we disagree on. So yeah, that's awesome. my answer. <laughs> I don't have an answer. That's a really good question. Um, and I guess, I don't care if they say something I don't like or don't disagree or agree with. I, I really don't think I interject my point of view and opinion in the show directly. I try to do the show about the guests and just ask the question. I don't try to, if they tell me that this, you know, the, the sky is green and not blue, I don't say, well, of course it's blue. Look, let's argue about that. I just say, really, it's green. Why do you think it's green? I just kind of just go with it. So I can't think of a time when someone was saying things I didn't like. Well, all the time, I suppose. I disagree with stuff, but I guess I don't care. I don't think about it. I just ask. I just keep the conversation going is what I try to do. So, I mean, no one ever said, a couple of times people cussed a few times, but like, okay, I left that in the show, big deal. Um, I, don't, I don't have a good answer for that. I don't, never have I had a problem with a guest saying something I didn't like. And then reacting to it. I just keep moving on. Like, okay. Like, you made me think of something that I think I've gotten better at over the years that I've been doing this now. And I think it's that when I first started it, I put my opinion into the podcast a lot. A lot yes. more. Yes. And then over time I've learned to really try to put the guest in the best light and, yeah. and take myself out of it. And I'll still interject things here and there. Um, but I don't speak nearly as much as I, I used to. And when I did Help Sales Radio, it was intentional not, because there you have yeah. to, one thing you do with a podcast is you need to pick your format. 
And one format could be you're the expert, and the show could be you talking, and you like I could be reading the news. Like I, I could have done a show that says let's do the SaaS market report, <laughs> and I could get on TechCrunch once a week and read about the SaaS stuff, and then read and then comment on it, right? And so that I'm the expert because I'm talking yeah. about. It. And I, and okay, you can do that, and that's cool. Lots of people do that, and I just wanted it to be about the guests. I intentionally, if you look at the intros, I don't even do a big bio of the guest. I want to get right to the question, right to the. I don't like. Oh, really? You got into tech because you were in the hospital field and then you liked the computer and then really you got an Apple when you were a kid? And really? And then you, you got a, a modem? Okay, thanks a lot. Like, I don't care. But I care about like, the topic that we're doing. So I, that will also help me not put my opinion in and talk about our topic today is and then get into yeah. that. So I want to, who cares what I think? Nobody cares. I guess. That's, that's what I had to learn over the course of like, a bunch of episodes. I get that. Yeah. Okay. So if you listen to the first ones, I talk a lot more, and then the later yep. ones, I don't talk as much. Plus, talking more, you have to prepare more. Yeah. And preparing for an interview is way different than me coming up with the things I have to say, and I have to come up with an opinion. And like, oh my God, really? The second a B round? Whoa! Like I have to have an opinion? Like I don't care. I don't care. So, so we're being uh, told we need to wrap it up a little bit. Do we have any like maybe up? one more question? Last question. Then we're out of here. Otherwise, I have a question for you. Oh no. <laughs> do it um, okay my question is where are you going to take this podcast from here um, just going to keep one episode at a time until I stop doing it there's no master plan but I'll, the last thing I'll say there will be a day when Helping Souls Radio ends I have a plan not written down yet that if it stops the next time I would have published a Helping Cells radio episode, I'm going to publish the first episode of whatever the heck else I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm just not going to miss a beat. Yeah. Now my whole life might change, but otherwise yeah. I'm just going to keep doing it because I like it. Yeah, you kind of get into a rhythm with it, I totally. think. And so, yeah, if you keep it going, it's great. Totally. How about you? What yeah. you what's next for you? Um, Broadway? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be. You're gonna be on. You want to be on um, NPR? I you? do want to be on NPR. I, I actually, that is a secret dream that's never gonna happen. But I, I do hold on to it. Why not? You've done 60, 65 episodes. Because uh, I sound like a twelve-year-old girl, and I don't have the broadcaster voice. NPR but, doesn't have any people that sound like twelve-year-old girls. Uh, so. People like Amy Sedaris encouraged me because she also has a voice of a twelve-year-old girl, and is very successful at speaking. So. See. Yeah. So it, it's not holding me back, but. Uh, no, I, I think um, I'm going to keep going with this one. I love interviewing people. My hope is that we get just more and more interesting, cool projects that CS leaders are working on that we can highlight on this thing because I think I keep seeing more and more creativity in the field, and so I want to keep going with that. And we've yeah. been going an hour and eight minutes, according to GarageBand. Oh, we have no problem talking. So I think that, <laughs> is that a wrap? Should I? I think um, that's a wrap. So uh, this is how I end Helping Sales Radio. Well, that's it for us. This episode may be over, but we can continue the conversation on Twitter with the ha we have our own hashtag Helping Sales. Fancy Did you know that hashtag. And on Twitter, I am at Bill Cush. On Twitter, what are you? I'm at Kristen Hare. At Kristen Hare. On Twitter. And if you like the show, or maybe you just like Kristen or me just a little bit, why don't you go on over to Apple? podcast or Stitcher or Google Spotify Play. or Google Play or wherever yeah. you get your podcast and leave us a review. That really messes with the algorithm -y thingy and helps us spread the word about the show. And if you like this episode, why don't you please share it with someone you love. Like it. Thank share you for it. listening to this episode. Thank you so radio. much. <laughs>